Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today we're going to be taking a look at this beautiful bottle. It is Penelope Bourbon's Barrel Strength Batch Number 6. The story of Penelope Bourbon is as wholesome as this bottle is beautiful. Mike Palladini and his wife Carrie teamed up with Mike's longtime childhood friend Danny Police. They both grew up together in New Jersey, and in 2018, they found out that both of their wives were expecting. Now, Mike and Carrie knew that if they ever had a baby girl, they were going to name her Penelope. Clearly, they found out that they were having a baby girl. That light bulb went off, and Penelope Bourbon was born. Now, if you ever have a chance to get on their website, PenelopeBourbon.com, I have it pulled up in front of me right here. You're going to see all of these, like I said, wholesome, heartwarming, family-type pictures. Everything is so well put together on their website. Uh, it's presented in a very clear fashion. The design is beautiful, and it's, it's just clear that these guys know what they are doing. That translates right onto this bottle. I mentioned this is an absolutely beautiful presentation. It's got that chic, modern, almost wine bottle type shape. Uh, I love the, I guess, minimalist label on the bottom here. I love the fact that you can really see right through here. You can see the liquid and clearly these engravings with the flowers, with the pea, everything is just wonderful. Just as transparent as this bottle is, the company is very transparent about what they're putting in the bottle. You can actually get on their website and they disclose their mash bill here. They talk about the fact that yes, they are sourcing. It's no secret. This is MGP juice. It is three and a half to four and a half years old. It's a combination of three different mash bills. And at the end of all things, it ends up being a four grain mash. We have corn, wheat, rye, and malted barley in here. And they actually give you the exact combination of grains that happens after they combine these three mash bills. We have 74% corn, 16% wheat as the secondary grain, a good amount of wheat, 7% rye and 3% malted barley. So with that 7% rye, uh, that's a pretty low rye content for anything coming out of MGP. And many of us that drink a lot of stuff sourced from MGP are very familiar with the 21% rye mash bill and that 36% rye mash bill. But having something with this combination is unique. And honestly, it's pretty interesting. The last thing I should say about this is that yes, at barrel strength, this is also non-chill filtered, which is great. So like I said, it's a transparent product. Uh, hats off to Penelope for the packaging, the design, the website presentation, just everything about it. They've basically ticked every single box. The only thing that worries me about this bottle is the age, the three and a half to four and a half years. So we'll see how this thing ends up tasting, how it smells. And, uh, you know, if they've kind of defied the odds here, I'll just be straight up. I paid 60 bucks for this bottle from sealbox.com. That seems to be the going rate for these. At 60 bucks, you're in Larceny Barrel Proof, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Maker's Mark Cast Strength. You're in territories with a lot of heavy hitting brands. So there's some stiff competition here. So let's go ahead and nose this, taste this, and see what we get with this Penelope Barrel Strength Batch Number 6. All right, so right away, I mean, you can smell the youth on this. It's, it's not hiding that's okay. We'll, we'll kind of try to appreciate it for what it is. I, I don't tend to love super young MGP stuff, but I'm going to try to get past that and really evaluate this whiskey uh, for what it is. Yes, yeah, so you get a good amount of corn grain right off the top, 74% corn, and obviously with that youth, that's going to really take the lead. You get a little light honey note as well. There's a good amount of sweetness in here, a good dose of ethanol, of course, from the proof, from the youth. It's not too aggressive or too spicy. It's gotta be because we have a low rye content at only 7% here. That wheat grain as the secondary grain really helps out. It's really helping to round this thing out and, and take away some of those rough edges. Yeah, you actually get a lot of this sort of candied licorice sweetness. Um, and, and I don't mean like anise licorice from like rye grain. I mean like Twizzler, like candied licorice, if you know what I mean. There's a great amount of uh, green apple going on here, some medicinal cherry, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of orange citrus. A lot of these notes you're going to recognize from weeded MGP products and you know high rye MG, MGP products. Those things are coming together here and you're getting a lot of those notes from both of them uh, coming to the surface. 
But the one thing in this that is a little bit different than anything that I've had in its sort of category or weight class or whatever you want to say is this distinct bitter barrel char note that kind of sits at the base of this bourbon. It's a very young, it's a very sprightly, youthful, bright, vibrant type whiskey. And a lot of people won't like it just because it's young. But if you can get past that, it actually has a lot of great flavors and great qualities and aromas going on that kind of differentiate it from other similarly aged MGP sourced products from NDPs. I just said a lot of acronyms. I'm sorry about that. This barrel char note in here has to be one of the most defining characteristics of the entire thing. Let's kind of recap the nose before we go to the palate. Sweet corn grain, sweet honey, medicinal cherry, a little candied licorice, green apple, orange zest, some cracked black pepper, cinnamon. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get onto the palate. Cheers. For as young as the nose smells, that palate is pretty damn impressive. I've got to say. When I first cracked this bottle open, I, I gave it no time. I cracked it open, poured it into a glass, smelled it, tasted it. And I was like, oh man, I don't know. I feel like the bottle needs a little more air. I was hoping, you know, just to get a little bit more out of this particular bourbon. But now, with a little bit of time, I feel like this thing has really developed nicely. It could just be that my palate has acclimated to it. But I'm finding a lot more uh, going on here on the palate than I used to. I used to think it was just too young, too sharp and aggressive. But right now, it's very sweet, very full, rounded out. The development is great, and the mouthfeel is spectacular. Non-chill filtered and a great proof. So uh, let's go in for a second sip and, and see how this continues to develop. The interesting part about this bourbon, with its unique mash bill, the blending, that wheat grain, all that stuff, the base of this particular bourbon is not actually like standard caramel or butterscotch. It's actually brown sugar slash maple as sort of the base that everything is integrated within. And that differentiates it a little bit. It's like if I had to, I guess, dig a little deeper, I would say the base is brown sugar and maple, but it's also that barrel char. The barrel char is coming through now. Every time I nose it, every time I sip it, it's there. It's slightly bitter. It adds a little bit of an interest to the bourbon, but not you know, never taking away from any of the other flavors. So that is what like the foundation is. Then all of these other characteristics stack on top. The sweet honey and sweet corn grain, very apparent on the palate here. And all of those sort of medicinal cherry, almost candied type notes, apple, orange, cherry, candied licorice, all of that is integrated very well within it. It's present from the nose to the palate. As, as much as I wanted to kind of not like this bourbon, I'm I'm pretty impressed by it. It's a mood pour, absolutely, but it's pretty darn good. Let's have another sip. Look, it's four and a half to three and a half year old MGP. It's not going to be God's gift to Earth, but they have done a very, very good job of blending this, you know, especially with those younger stocks that they're using. To be able to get all of these flavors out of those barrels, to be able to combine and create something like this that takes the best parts of high rye MGP, the best parts of weeded MGP, to bring those together and have something that is structurally sound, well-constructed, all of that kind of stuff. I've got to say hats off to Penelope. It is not going to blow you away by any means. Yes, on an average day, you still might prefer something a little deeper, darker, and richer. But if you're in the mood for something a little a little bit lighter, something, uh, you know, just kind of off profile and interesting with an incredibly long spicy finish. This Penelope barrel strength is no joke. So that's all I've got for this video. I don't know if I'm going to say highly recommend, but you know what? If you come across this and you're interested in the flavors that I've described, yeah, go ahead and pick it up around that $60 MSRP price point. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button if you want to find out when I'm going live when new content is dropping. And if you enjoy what you're seeing on the Drums and Drams channel, you want some access to some behind the scenes content and you want to support the channel in a different way, uh, consider joining the Patreon. The link is in the description below. Otherwise, I'm going to get out of here. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for checking this out. And I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams. Cheers.